Northern-based stakeholders on the platforms of various socio-cultural groups have recently been voicing concern over what they refer to as the rapidly deteriorating security situation across the region, especially against the backdrop of the forthcoming general election in 2023. Uh, the Northern Elders Forum, as in Nigeria, appears to be the most vocal of the groups and have had to consistently blame the government or President Mohamed Buhari uh, for its perceived failings in the war against insurgency and banditry. And of course, joining us to discuss this issue in addition to how insecurity can impact the impending elections, uh, growing poverty in the north and a host of other areas of national importance is Alhaji Tanko Yakasai, a politician, elder statesman, human rights activist and a founding member of Arewa Consultative Forum. Welcome to the program, sir. Now, let's start uh, with this uh, growing clamor for a southern leader uh, this time around uh, for the uh, general elections in 2023 next year. Why is the North opposed to it? Well, um, I think you are wrong. The North is not opposed to power shift to the South. Majority of politicians from the North who participated in the formation of the National Party of Nigeria, NPN, were in support of uh, rotation and zoning uh, to be entrenched into the constitution of the MPN. And that was the first time in the history of Nigeria that the question or the principle of zoning and rotation was entrenched into a constitution of a political party. And we also advocated that it should be entrenched into the Nigerian constitution such that by the time Sani Abacha constitution was getting ready to be uh, signed into law, we were able to convince Sani Abacha himself to agree that the constitution should contain provision for uh, zoning and rotation. So I am in support of zoning and rotation right from the beginning to any time. Okay, Alaji Yakasai. So the, the North is not against the rotation. The North is not against the rotation or zoning of the political offices at the national level at all. Maybe there are a few individuals, but they are minorities, insignificant minorities. Okay, let's move on from zoning into the insecurity within the nation. It is uh, leading up into the elections yes. for 2023. Everyone has their eyes on the insecurity yes. within the nation. It's being blamed on everything from drugs yes. to uh, bad leadership, et cetera. Can I get your opinions on how to better yes. ease the tension within our entire nation? Yes. Well, um, if you remember, the question of security has been with us for a very, very long time. And it was one of the three programs that Buhari, General Buhari made as his cardinal program for uh, contesting the election in, in 2001. Was it to, by the time he contested this election. And people in Nigeria, both from the South and the North, voted him for him on this understanding that when he comes, he will be able to deal with the problem of insecurity in Nigeria. Of course, insecurity was one of the three programs that he uh, presented to Nigerians that he promised to implement. So now, the people expected President Buhari to implement the three programs. Unfortunately, we are still having problem of security in the country. I don't see any initiative from President Buhari to deal with this problem of insecurity in Nigeria. But we need to deal with the problem sooner or later. I would suggest that if it is possible for Buhari 
to initiate uh, a system of uh, this kind of uh, policing that some other countries are using to deal with the problem either of insecurity or other problems within the country. Uh, you can set up people's militia. People's militia will be a kind of police that will be uh, made up of ordinary citizens. But the arrangement is such that they will not allow anybody to disturb the peace and tranquility in the country, including the police and the military. If he can introduce this before he leaves in the next one and a half years, I think he will be uh, doing the best effort he can do so far to put Nigeria in a proper way of stability and peace. Uh, if that is not possible, I would like to appeal to the political parties that the major political parties that we have in Nigeria, A A APC and uh, PDP, to entrench the issue of uh, 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 this policing arrangement that I've just mentioned uh, in their constitution, in their manifesto, so that when they come to power, they will introduce a system of people's militia in Nigeria that will begin from the village to the district to local government level and to national level. Uh, that will be the only thing that I can think that will tackle the problem or if deal with the problem of insecurity in Nigeria effectively. That we can do and I think is the only way I can think of us getting out of this dilemma. Well, all right, Elijah Yakasai, still on the issue of security. Go ahead. Yes. Now, bandits have uh, also been tagged terrorists. Uh, and has that changed the narrative, uh, you know, on the war or the efforts, rather, against uh, the activities of these uh, uh, individuals? Unfortunately, I didn't hear you. Can you... Yeah, we're talking about... Uh, uh, the question. Yes, we're talking about uh, terrorists, or rather bandits being tagged terrorists now uh, at the moment. So has that changed the narrative regarding uh, the war against uh, their crime? No, you see, the, you have to make efforts. You cannot change the narrative without making an effort. This is part of an initiative. So far, we have not solved the problem. Promises were made, and yet the problems are there. And they are not limited to the north. They are national problems. They happen in Ibo land, they happen in Yoruba land, they happen in the minority land area in the south. So they are not limited to the north. Some, some media organizations tend to give the impression that the issue of insecurity is limited to the north. That is wrong. Is not correct. It's a national problem. It has been there before. <coughs> the only thing is that it has magnified itself by the time in the last five, six years. Uh, so it's a national problem, and only a national solution can solve this problem. And there can be no solution, national solution, without a national program. This is the reason why I'm talking of national militia. If we do it, we'll be able to deal with this problem because it will affect every location, every segment of the society. And we'll be able to deal with the problem effectively. Other countries have done it and they are successful. Not one, not two, not three. Many countries go to China, go to Russia, go to Tanzania, go to many other countries that are practicing militia. They, they deal with their problem through that uh, initiative. We can deal with that problem in Nigeria also by initiating people militia. Alaji Tanko, this militia that you speak of, it's, it seems similar to the discussions that have been going out 
about state police, about getting um, the control of each state by each state. But it seems that our president is adamantly against state police. He has said it multiple times. Um, we do have national police. We have the military. We have all these bodies that are seemingly uh, designated for this exact thing that you're talking about. How do we cure this impasse? Um, there will be no state police, yet the bodies that we have are somewhat ineffective in combating this ill that we call insurgency. Yes, uh, people who are suggesting for state police and uh, local government police, we tried them before. They did not solve our problem. But people's militia is not a police like you understand it. It's a different organization. You bet probably you, you, you need to know how people's militia is operating. It is a national setup that is not controlled by one section of the country or by any local uh, people. It is a nationwide organization and uh, is well equipped, well prepared, well, uh, the, the members are well trained and they are ordinary citizens who have the interest of the country at heart. They try, I mean, this, these are things that have been in operation in many countries, like I said before. And wherever the, the, the people militia is, system is operating, they are able to successfully deal with the problem of insecurity and other issues that was disturbing the country. So if we do it here, I can assure you that within a period of one year, this problem of insecurity will be a thing of the past. Mm. Uh, still talking about the issue of or the uh, general state of the nation, uh, Alaji Yakasai, uh, critics have argued Nigeria's social, political, and economic uh, problems are largely uh, self-inflicted, as it were. So, how does that define us uh, as a nation? Well, um, you see, our problem is that we elected leaders on sentiment because we like their face, or because they happen to belong to our tribe, or we share common religion, we cannot solve our problem until we have political parties with a program that is dedicated to the solution of various problems that are bedeviling our country. This is the reason why you find that one I have nothing against Buhari, but when Buhari came out, he promised to solve our problem within the shortest possible time. Now he's, he's in power for six months, uh, six years, sorry, or even more. And yet the problems are still there. So why? Because it, the problem, uh, a program by an individual cannot solve a national problem. It is only a national program adopted by the political party that is ruling the country, whose members are familiar with the strategy of the party on how to deal with the various problems. That is, will be a national program, and a political party that will form the government is also familiar with the way that this problem will be solved, and its members, also its members. So members of that party, when they are appointed as ministers or commissioners or whatever, they will be able to come together in a form of synergy to implement that program of their party to the satisfaction of everybody. But uh, to rely on a indi single individual and think that you can solve national problem, I think is a wishful thank you. And still on the nation, uh, of course, 2023, we are all gearing up for elections. Quite a few individuals have thrown their uh, hats into the ring in contesting for the presidency. 
of all the individuals who have announced. Um, I just want to get your assessment of a couple of them and um, our, you know, our looks for uh, 2023 and the presidential race. Well, um, Madam, so far, I think I have only known one person who declared his interest for the presidency in our major political parties, and that is Bola Tinubu. Let us wait for others to come out in the same APC and in other political parties, particularly the major ones like PDP. And then we'll be able to compare them. We'll look at their background. What were they able to do before when they had the opportunity to rule? Then you will be able to know that these people, by their uh, history, they are able to achieve some level of success in the public affairs, in governing the, 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 the people when they got the opportunity to do so. Otherwise, uh, it will be a matter of uh, uh, speculation. Let us know who and who are interested in contesting the presidency uh, come 2023. Then we'll compare them. By comparing them, we'll be able to get pick the best one among them and support him. Hmm. And of course, Nigerians are already gearing up for that uh, task ahead. Now, Alaji uh, Yakasai, can we align the issue of restructuring with the clamor for a southern presidency? Uh, can the North work with the South to achieve this? Um, what will it take? Well, I have been hearing my friends and other people talking about restructuring. You see, you cannot dismiss an advocacy or support it without knowing what it is. What I have been saying is that the people who are advocating for restructuring should please come out and define it in black and white so that you and I will be able to know what is restructuring. To me, restructuring that people are talking about is a mere slogan. There is no blueprint yet presented to Nigeria so that every Nigerian will know what restructuring is all about. What would, look, I am an old man at the age of 96 plus. I have 19 children, 62 grandchildren, actually 63. I've got the latest arrival about two weeks ago. I would like to know what will my children, my grandchildren uh, have in a restructured Nigeria. I don't want a uh, slogan to carry me or the country again. One uh, President Buhari was uh, contesting, his main uh, slogan was change. I believe many Nigerians knew this very well, that they supported President Buhari uh, when he was a candidate because of his promise for change. But they did not insist that he should define what would be, what this would look like in terms of his change for the country. Now, President Buhari is in this country, ruling this country for six and almost half years. And nobody can definitely now say this is the change that the administration has introduced. I read just a few days ago that somebody listing uh, a number of achievements which uh, the government of President Buhari uh, achieved. But uh, these are things that anybody who is given power will achieve. Because when you are given power, you are given the authority, the funds, the, 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 the civil service to do program. If you don't have program, somebody will suggest something to you. My 
conception is that probably some of the achievements were as a result of friendly discussions. They are not part of the articulated program of the party in power today. They are achieved by accident. Some of them, some of them are good. For instance, I'm in support of the uh, uh, initiative to extend the railway system in Nigeria to many other parts of the country, because that will help uh, the country. Tabab Ali started it. Unfortunately, he was overthrown. Nobody talked about it until now. Now, we can also listen to what APC leaders are talking about in terms of uh, uh, farming, irrigation farming in the country. All these are good programs. I'm in support of them. But they are programs that are not part of the original concept of the uh, manifesto of the APC. They, they, are, they are just things that came, out, uh, came, came about by accident. I would like to see, before an election, a political party come out with a program. This is the reason why political parties all over the world introduce manifesto. Manifesto is the articulation of their program. So that when they are in power, they will be able to implement the program. And it is in the process of implementing that program that the people in the country will be able to know that the party is really making progress, is really achieving the promises uh, it made to the public uh, when they were looking for voting. But if the program that will come by chance is not part of the program of a party, some of the things that people are talking about now were not there before, before the election of the present government. So I am insisting that people who are contesting election in the future, either as local government chairmen, state members of national, state and national assembly, governors or president, should come out with a documented policy program. Let them look around the country and see what are the problems that are bedeviling the nation, and let them come out with their own program on how to tackle these problems. So that after getting elected and after getting some time ruling, we'll be able to assess them whether they are really implementing what they promised the nation or they are not. You see, I can tell you something probably you don't know. I happened to be a member of NAPO in the First Republic. It was the main opposition party in the North, but it was the party of the common people. We call them Talakawa, the poor people. We don't, didn't have money at that time. But what we used to do when elections around the corner like this, we send our people, we contribute money and send people to Sokoto, to Borno, to Lagos, to Inugu, and them, let them go and know what is bedeviling the, 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 their society. When they come back, they will report that we, we find that problems A, B, C, D are bedeviling the people in Sokoto, in Borno, in Inugu, in Ibadan, and the rest of them. Then we set up a committee, and the committee will sort out this problem, which ones are national and which ones are local. Then we put the program into our manifesto that the ones that are national will form the national basis for national program of our party, and problems that are local will be made available to us so that when we send our people or our organizers to the locality where the problem is uh, present, they will promise the people that when we come to power, we'll deal with this problem. It's the only solution, it's the only way that you'll be able to make progress and solve problem, not by chance. Yes, by chance you can make 
as, uh, implement a program, but it is a mere chance. You need to be acquainted with your program. You have a blueprint for it. You have a strategy as to how you are going to raise funds, how you are going to get experts who will help you to implement the program. Because you are the only person elected. That's why I actually don't like the presidential system anymore. I used to be a supporter of presidential system, but I realized that Nigerian society is not suitable for executive presidential system in, uh, for the country. Mm. I would like us to go back to the pre, uh, parliamentary system, particularly with some modification, which uh, is now known as French system of government. Mm. Elect a president, give him a limited power, then elect parliament, and let the parliament uh, vote a prime minister into office by way of vote of confidence, then the, pres the prime minister will, in, in, uh, will, will convince his colleagues, members of the National Assembly, to support him and make him prime minister. And his cabinet will be made up of members of parliament so that any individual that is nominated as a member of the cabinet is known to the members of the parliament and therefore they know his capacity and that he will be in a, be in a position to implement a, a program in a particular ministry given to him to, to, to administer. But the way we are doing things now, that we elect somebody as a president with the whole power is a commander in chief of the armed forces, is, is this and that and so on. And in the end, when he is not able to perform, there is nothing we can do because we cannot impeach, impeach him. Impeachment of a president or a, of a governor requires two-third majority. Any fool can get resources to win the support of one third of the membership of state assembly, local government, or national assembly. So it is only when you have a system like French system where you have the prime minister who will emerge from the elected members of parliament and who will nominate ministers from the elected members of parliament and the ministers are known to the elected members of parliament that we will be able to get people with the necessary competence to change a situation bad as we have in Nigeria for the better. Indeed, Alaji Yakasai, and to add to that, of course, it's often been said that uh, the presidential uh, system of government is a little bit more expensive than the parliamentary uh, system of uh, governance, as you spoke about earlier. Now, uh, you also talked about adhering to manifestos, uh, but these days we find that uh, there's incessant cross-carpeting uh, by politicians from one party to another. So how does that uh, affect the delivery of, uh, you know, democracy to, to the public? Can you repeat it? Because yes, uh, we're talking about. I didn't uh, get you. Yes, so we're talking about the issue of cross carpeting by politicians from one party to another. And earlier on, you alluded to the fact that there has to be an adherence to oh. manifestos, as it were. So, how would you re uh, react to that? Briefly, please. Well, um, this is unfortunate because it's very immoral. You go to people ask them to elect you, they elected you. Then all of a sudden, tomorrow, you cross over to another party. In the First Republic, we call that carpet crossing. And carpet crosser is regarded as a betrayal. Carpet crossing is regarded as a betrayal of national confidence, of, 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 of people uh, confidence in you as a person. We see it as immoral. Unfortunately, now, even uh, we, I'm hearing of a, 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 a proposal, I don't know how far true it is, that uh, one of our former presidents is being uh, 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 it's been 
requested, so to speak, by a political party to cross over to the member to, to, the, to that party, and, and the party is promising to give him nomination. I hope that is not true, but if it is true, it will show the extent to which our morality in politics has de degraded. I think it's very immoral. What we I think we should do is that we should, but the courts in Nigeria have their share of, 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 of the, the, the uh, institutionalizing this uh, trend in Nigeria. Because by the provision of our constitution, people elected on the platform of one political party, if they cross over to another political party, they should lose their assets, their position. If they are president, they will cease to be the president. If they are governors, they will cease to be the governor. If they are members of national state assembly or local government council, they should cease to be members. That issue was taken to court, and the court did not rule in accordance with the provision of the constitution. And this is why the reason the problem became a national issue. Now, I would like to appeal to our judiciary to give meaning to that provision of the Constitution, that when somebody is elected into public office and he cross carpet, he resigned from the party on whose platform he was elected to another party, he should automatically lose his position, uh, his elected position, uh, when he crossed over to another party, so that he can go and contest on the platform of the new party. And if it is the wish of the electorate in his constituency, they will return him. But uh, the courts did not act uh, decisively on this issue. And I hope that this position will be uh, reinforced in our constitution and that our courts will be patriotic enough to give meaning to this provision of the Constitution so that it will be uh, used to deal with this problem that we are talking about in our uh, electoral system. Well, Alaji Tanko Yakasai, thank you so much for joining the program this afternoon. It was a great com uh, conversation, and we've learned quite a lot from you and your experience. Thank you for joining. Thank you.